All right, all right, all right. Hey, YouTube, I'm Lucky, and it's time for the Trials Meta Report. This is where I break down all of the data and the information from last weekend in Trials to give you all the information you need to know on what is the meta in Trials. What are the best guns to use in Trials? And we have a very, very interesting week here because we have the Trials revamp, which has been out for a little while now, along with the insane sandbox changes from Bungie. So everyone wants to know what are the best weapons in Trials right now. And I'm going to bring you a very detailed list of data starting right now. Before I pull this up, though, comment down below. What do you think is the number one most used weapon from last weekend in Trials? Comment it quickly because I'm about to bring it up right now and you're going to find out if you are right. The number one most used weapon was the Dead Man's Tail. No surprises there. It got a slight buff so that it was a lot more viable for controllers and it inadvertently became even stronger for mouse and keyboard, which it was already so dominant. I mean, one of the best weapons, one of the strongest weapons, especially for shutting down supers because it rolls with Vorpal on it. That's the god roll. That's what you're looking for if you're using a roll that doesn't have Vorpal on it. You're using the wrong roll. Corporal Roll is the best roll for Dead Man's Tail, and it was the number one most used weapon from last weekend in Trials, 1.3 million kills. Number two goes to the Kinetic, uh, or Stasis weapon, I guess it's in the Kinetic slot, but it's a Stasis weapon. The IS Luna was brought back, and a lot of people are loving it, a lot of people using it. Let me know if you were using the IS Luna last week. What roll were you using? Did you watch my updated God Rolled guide? I'm definitely interested in reading those comments down below. The number three most used weapon was... The thousand yard stare no surprises there like i said before this is the best sniper in pvp right now the lowest zoom and has such great perks such amazing handling snapshot everything you could possibly want in a sniper the thousand yard stare is such a good weapon if you aren't using this in pvp make sure to go use it i made a video recently uh compiling my, myself using it throughout an entire day of trials so make sure you watch that as well number four was the fell just lie what is ha, what is wrong with the apes out there you can't let this weapon go can you the Felwinter's Lie has such terrible handling, but it does have the absolute most lethality, the most one-hit kill potential of any pellet shotgun in the game. So no surprises there that the Felwinter's Lie is still up there in the charts. I'm, I'm surprised people haven't let it go yet, though, right? I'm surprised people aren't convinced that the 80 RPMs are better. I think it's the 80, 85 RPMs are better, but maybe time will change that. Number five goes to the Chaperone. This thing is such an ape weapon. It's especially strong if you're on controller. I mean, it just gets those headshots. Uh, with depending on what subclass you're using, you can you know pair this with so many other strong melee abilities, knockout, for example, or you can you know use spectral and get you know wall hacks, true sight from this. Uh, so number five goes to the chaperone, no surprises there. Number five is the main ingredient, and I would be willing to bet that all five hundred and eight thousand five hundred and seventy four of those kills were all from Zer's main ingredient. Zer brought such a good roll. If you missed out on that, again, make sure you're subscribed because I bring you a Zer PSA within ten minutes of Zer's arrival and his bugged arrival every single week. Moving on to the next one, we have the what is this number seven slot right here the bxr battler no surprises there a newer weapon and this thing it just absolutely slaps i do think this will probably fall out with time because i do think there are some other pulse rifles that are probably a little bit stronger than this but we'll see time will tell moving on to the number eight slot we have the adored sniper uh an age old and such a good strong sniper very consistent you always it just comes with a good roll so um no surprises there the, the ease of the access to this weapon to get this is very easy so no surprise the doors there. And the messenger makes it in the number nine slot. I just posted a video uh, as the time I'm recording this. I just posted a video where I was using my God Roll Messenger with Rapid Hit, Despacito. And this thing is so, so, so good. No surprises to see the messenger up there. Getting those long range angles and getting that Despacito proc is very nice. And the last word squeaks into the top 10, filling out the top 10 weapons from last weekend in Trials. Not surprisingly, the Matador didn't make it into the top 10. I think that the 65 RPMs are just not nearly as viable. I think people are either going for the uh, 80, 85 RPMs, or they're going for the aggressive frames, apparently like Felwinters, or you're just skipping the pellet shotguns altogether and you're sticking with something like the Chaperone. But let's go into finer detail, okay? Thank you to Trials Report for this information, but now let's go into Warmind.io. I love this site. They have some really in-depth stuff here. Now we can break down. Those were just the top 10 weapons, regardless of uh, kinetic, energy, or power, but these are broken down into like the top 30 weapons, the top 10 kinetic, the top 10 energy, and the top 10 power. This will give you a much more detailed and in-depth idea of what the meta is for trials. So in the kinetic slot, number one, we have Dead Man's Tail, IS Luna, Chaperone, Messenger number four, the last word number five, Ace of Spades was the number six, the Messenger Adept made it to the number seven, the Forerunner, the Halo Magnum made it to the number eight, Crimson makes it to the number nine, and the Fatebringer 
all the way down at number 10 there. Very interesting top 10 for the kinetic slot. Now at the top energy, we've got the thousand yard stair, Bell Witcher's Lie. Very interesting uh, flip there if you look at the data between one to the other. Sometimes the API can be a bit confusing, but interesting that the thousand yard stair is up there. Um, let me see here. Let me double check this. Oh no, the thousand yard stair was one above Bell Witcher's Lie, so that does make sense. Okay. Now the main ingredient, Zer's main ingredient, the BXR Battler, the Adored, the Palindrome Adept makes it to the number six. The Matador 64 does make it in the top 10 of energy weapons. The Le Monarch, now this thing is an absolute pain. The Le Monarch, especially swapping to a hand cannon, was a big pain for me this weekend in trials. More and more people are doing this. It gets rough out there, especially or in empowering rifts as well. The Lawrence Driver squeaks into the top 10 for energy weapon. And number 10 goes to the Telescope Sniper. The Occluded Finality, the strongest controller sniper in the game. Now, as far as power weapons go, it, power doesn't really matter that much in trials. There's like one round for power, but apparently a lot of people are enjoying the Galhorn and power. We've got 35% of total usage. And then Ascendancy was there at half truth. I was strongly expecting the half truths to be the number two weapon because of the aimbot sword effect with the new, you know, you can swap to the sword and it just flies across. If you've seen my videos, right? Like it literally like locks onto people from like 30 meters away. It's insane. I'm surprised that wasn't the number two or the number one most used weapon, but maybe not everyone knows about Eager Edge and how strong that is, but eventually they're going to watch my videos and find out apparently. Number four goes to the memory interdict. No surprises there. I've said this many times before. The strongest grenade launcher in the game. Ward Cliff. Tomorrow's answer. Reads Regret, Adept, Reads Regret, Blast two, and the other half. Wow, I'm really surprised the other half made it there. I'm surprised enough people have the other half. Type down in the comment section below if you actually have the other half sniper. Very few people have that thing. The drop rate seems to be almost non-existent, but some very interesting data and some interesting details from this last weekend in Trials. This is the meta. These are the top 10 strongest weapons, regardless of kinetic energy or power. So make sure if you're out there trying to win, trying to go flawless, if you've never been, Using these weapons is certainly going to be to your advantage. It's going to help you get that first time flawless. If you've been flawless many times before and you just like using weird things, unique things, feel free to do so. Enjoy it. It's destiny. It's a fun game. Have fun, right? Do whatever you like. Now, let's go over the statistics from last weekend. We are seeing a steep decline in population and trials, all right? We are down to 277,000 players. Now, it's still a pretty healthy amount. I'm not saying that trials is a dead playlist by any means. I've said this many times in the past. If Trials dips below 100,000 players, Trials is a dead playlist, and Bungie has failed horribly. We're at 277,000 players from last weekend, which isn't that bad overall, especially compared to so many different bad weeks in the past from Trials of the Nine, but we shouldn't have to compare to that, okay? We should have a healthy player base, and we should hold ourselves to a higher standard, Bungie. And we should try to keep probably closer to like 400,000 now would be amazing for every week, but you know, you can't control that, especially when you have issues of repeat loot coming back right this weekend was the shire's wrath smg brought back as the lighthouse loot which is meant to be end game pvp the most desirable loot but it's just not desirable for most of us out there right now i think because the adept isn't that much stronger than the non-adept and we've had the smg so 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 many times that there's no appeal to go and get it again right so what bungie should do and this is something i'm going to make probably an entirely separate video is every time the lighthouse weapon comes around each week and it's a repeat weapon, it should have like some different perks on it. You know what I'm saying? Just rotate some of the perks in and out. Just like you changed, you know, the summoner had different perks or the astral horizon had different perks, right? All these different uh, weapons have different perks from season to season sometimes. We change up the roles. Sometimes they have snapshot opening shot. Sometimes you have to use no distraction snapshot or whatever it may be, right? Switch those perks around every time that it comes back to the lighthouse loot. And it would be really interesting because then you'd be looking for a new role. Maybe the role you would look for this week would be the PvP god role. But then the next time it comes around, you know, six weeks later, it would be the PvE god role you're looking for, perhaps. Or maybe a different combination of two different perks we've never seen before. That would make the Lighthouse loot so much more interesting and exciting rather than the repeat Shayur's Wrath, the exact same role that we have had about 10 different times now, Bungie. We need more diversity if you want to keep this playlist alive. It doesn't take that much effort. Let me know if you agree in the comment section below. And that is the Trials Meta Report. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe with notifications on. Smash the like button. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.